I'm Tom, and today I'm going to talk about printing fast. So there's two parts to printing speeds. One is the speed you tell your slicer to use. The other is how fast the printer can actually follow along those instructions and how fast it can move between two printing areas. Now, the early firmwares simply assumed that the printer can instantly speed up to the speed you want it to and also instantly slow down to zero. This worked because each of the printer's axes isn't perfectly stiff but has a certain amount of elasticity and also because the speeds were rather low back then. Nowadays, modern firmwares use a much more elegant approach. Uh, each time an axis speeds up or slows down, the firmware runs through three individual stages. Phase 1 works just like the old school firmwares. Because your printer's axis is uh, still somewhat elastic, the motor can skip up to a certain speed without having to slowly ramp up. But instead of jumping right to the full speed, the difference between the initial and final speed after the jump is limited to a certain amount. That's what's called jerk. The second phase is acceleration. This is where the motor continuously ramps up to speed at a set rate until the desired speed is reached. Phase 3 is the constant velocity phase where the motor runs at a certain RPM without speeding up or slowing down. Now, depending on how long the specific move is, the motor might not have enough time to ramp up to the full speed, but goes directly from accelerating to decelerating. This is also part of the reason why a printer doesn't print twice as fast when you simply double the printing speed without also increasing the acceleration values. So let's take a look at what this means in practice. Here's my printer's x-axis which has a heavy crack weight extruder sitting on top and is driven by a fairly beefy 48 newton centimeter motor. Let's see how it moves. Well, I'm pretty sure you didn't see much there. Uh, let's take a look at the same move in slow motion. There's the initial running jump to the jerk speed. Then it's accelerating, going at constant velocity, decelerating, and finally jerking off to zero speed. So this is the basic movement from a dead stop to a dead stop. Firmers like Marlin also incorporate a feature called look ahead, which makes sure that when the printer is instructed to move along a path, like for example a curved or round part of a layer, it doesn't have to come to a dead stop between each of the path segments, but can conserve some of its momentum along the way. Because for each segment, the firmware makes use of the jerk speed difference, the printed surface comes out smoother without all the bumps that you usually see where the segments meet. So at this point, you're probably going, well, this is all well and nice, but how do I make my printer as fast as possible? Uh, so as you might have guessed, the three parameters of maximum speed, acceleration, and jerk determine how fast the print head can go from point A to point B. So let's start out with the most uncritical one of these, jerk. Simply set it to about 20 to 30% of your print speed. So if you're planning on printing at around 60 millimeters per second, a value of around 15 millimeters per second is pretty much perfect. Set it too high and you'll risk introducing ringing artifacts at sharp corners. Set it too low and you'll get blobs where the sections of each move meet. So it's not really something where you need to spend a lot of time on adjusting. You can either use the command M205X and your jerk value. So for example, M205X15, then save it with M500 or directly store the value in the firmware. Check out my video guide on all things firmware if you want to go down that route. Uh, by the way, updating jerk sets the value for both X and Y. So the next tunable parameter we're going to look at is acceleration. Now against popular belief, you cannot determine your maximum acceleration value by simply jogging an axis and checking at which value it starts to lose steps. 3D printers are a bit more complex than that. Uh, the limiting factor is going to be at what speed each axis is going to start resonating. And every 3D printer has some frequency at which it resonates. Uh, here's what that looks like. Now, this is something that you only rarely run into, but if you do, it's going to make it impossible to print that specific part. And by the way, even MakerBot haven't figured this out yet, so it's no shame if your printer sometimes skips a beat. 
Um, rectangular infill on parts with thin, rounded or tapered sections are especially unforgiving when it comes to exposing resonances. Just take a look at the I made one section of DAM301's pen holder linked below. So to tune accelerations, I've uploaded a simplified test part to you imagine that provokes resonances in a similar way. You'll likely hear when your printer goes into resonance, so if you listen closely, you don't even need to have filament in your printer when doing a test print. Though I do recommend leaving it in there, since it makes it much easier to see when something has gone wrong. To work our way up to the ideal acceleration values, set the maximum speed to a rather low value to make sure that we're only tuning the acceleration. Use for example the command M203X100, Y100 for that. Unlike jerk, acceleration can be set independently for both X and Y by either using the M201 command like M201X9001, Y3000 or again by directly editing the firmware's configuration. Now for actually fine tuning acceleration, it's mostly trial and error really. So start out with some arbitrary values for both X and Y, like 9,001 millimeters per second squared for X and 3,000 millimeters per second squared for Y if your printer has a moving bed. Uh, if not, use the same values as for X. And then just print the test part with 100% rectangular infill and see if X or Y starts losing steps. Uh, if it works, increase the values by 10 to 20% and try again. If it doesn't, decrease them, obviously. Uh, if you've found a value for each axis that's just borderline working, leave a safety margin of around 20% and voila, there's the maximum acceleration value that you want to use. Now, depending on the exact type of printer you're using, you might want to reduce that a bit further if your printer's frame starts to wobble around too much. Especially the x-axis of the triangular Mendel and Prusa Mendel frames are prime candidates here. By the way, none of the features in Marlin or in Slicer work particularly well to suppress resonances. So last but not least, speed, or more precisely the maximum speed. While adjusting this, keep in mind that the maximum speed has very little effect on both printing times and the quality of your prints. Also, unless you have a fairly long axis like my Mendel 90, it's pretty unlikely that your printer will ever reach anything much above 150 or 200 millimeters a second. So if you simply want some values that work, just use 150 millimeters per second and be done with it. If not, you can tune it much like the acceleration value, but this time you can actually do test moves to test for the maximum speed each axis can reach. The command for setting a new maximum feed rate is M203 and it works exactly like the one for setting the acceleration parameters. So set a maximum speed and do a test move along an axis, but make sure your host doesn't artificially slow it down. You can also move the printer to a position by using the G1 command with the desired position along the axis in millimeters and the desired speed in millimeters per minute, so that's 60 times the speed you'd set in your firmware. For example, the command to move the x-axis to the 100 mm position at 200 mm per second is G1 X100 F12000. So just like with tuning acceleration, once you've found a critical value that just about works, deduct a safety margin of around 20%. And generally values far above 300 mm per second aren't much use anyways. Now, we've tuned X and Y and this is probably a good moment to do a full test print to try out the new parameters you've found. But we still haven't tuned the Z axis and E, the extruder, and that's for a good reason. Uh, the speeds of both of those axes aren't really critical to the speed of your prints. Uh, just that jerk acceleration and speed low enough for them to have everything working and you'll be golden. So I hope this guide helped you out with getting your printer working as reliably as possible. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel if you want to stay up to date when I release new videos. Also feel free to share this video or any of my other videos on your favorite social media platform. Uh, there's also now a survey link in the description where you can suggest new topics and vote on which ones I should do next. And that's it for today, thanks for watching.